Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how to paint this scene. This is a landscape with a bridge and a swan. I don't know what the title is. <laughs> I can't remember, but <laughs> anyhow, we're going to be showing you step by step how to do this one from start to finish today. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's in a chat today, so if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask them and I'll try to answer. Let's get started. Alrighty, so I got it right there. Swan Bridge Landscape. <laughs> Very simple. <laughs> I had it, didn't even know it. All right, <laughs> 9 by 12 is what we're going to be using today. Frederick's Mixed Media Canvas Board. Um, they've provided our canvas today, so thank you to them. It's got a nice solid core, so it doesn't warp. And um, it's good for watercolors too, so I kind of, um, I haven't tried it with watercolors, but um, you can wet it down ahead of time and it's real porous. So I have found it accepts acrylic paints really well though. Uh, you're going to want some sort of a sponge today. I've got a sea sponge here that I've pre-moistened. It's just damp, but not uh, soggy. It's not dripping water. Uh, some gloves because it's going to get messy. I'm like literally wrapping this in my gloves so that I don't forget to put my gloves on. Because I forgot last and time. And then we'll forget where it is. Uh, and then I'll, yeah, I'll be like, where's my sponge? <laughs> Um, I've got a couple of large brushes that we'll be using for the background. So I've got these are Aspen uh, Princeton Aspen series, uh, two inch uh, Mottler flat. I think this is either flat or bright. And then this was the angle Mottler. So, and then we're gonna you're gonna need some sort of a. And I might not you need the large bright, but you're gonna need some sort of a round brush or a long flat brush to do um, the branches. We've got a lot of branches, tree trunks and things like that. So I'll, I'll be using the round uh, one and four uh, from the Summit series from the Princeton uh, 6100 Summit series. And then I've got a four filbert for some of the water. And I'm not sure exactly which one of these brushes that I'll be using for everything today. So I'm just going to kind of like set aside the things that I think I might need. And uh, I may or may not use all of them. Uh, got a number two aught round here as well for some of the smaller branches. And then for some of the things like the bridge and different different um, smaller details, I've got like a script liner, an 18 aught short liner. And then my two angle brushes, the 3 8 inch and quarter inch. The red handled brushes are the Princeton Velvet Touch. All our brushes are Princeton brushes. They're awesome. Um, they're a brush sponsor, so thank you to them. And then I've also got my Deerfoot Stiplers. And these will be for smaller stippling work. We'll be using the um, sponge for most of the larger areas, like on our trees. And then we'll be using these for some of the smaller areas. And I think I'm going to try out this to do this large cedar tree that's in the corner here. Um, just thought it might be um, fun to try it with a larger brush. May or may not work out. We'll find out, I guess, as we go. So I have not painted this ahead of time. What I do is just kind of like try to figure out what I think I might um, use for colors and brushes and things ahead of time, kind of study the image. And then um, it's it's uh, it's a free for all when we get to the live streams because just never know how it's going to work out. So we're fingers crossed. We know what we're doing today. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Let's go over colors. I've got Carbon black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, quinacridone, burnt orange, yellow oxide, ye Indian yellow hue, cadmium yellow medium, um, thalo green yellow shade. I decided to go ahead and put out some thalo blue green shade just to have it. Um, ultramarine blue, doxazine purple, and quinacridone magenta. And then I've got unbleached titanium, titanium white, and zinc white. And we'll be using the zinc white for that kind of foggy effect in the background. It's got very like misty looking trees in the background. So that'll help with that because it's a transparent white. If you don't have transparent white, the zinc white, you can use your titanium white instead and just add some water to it to make it more transparent. But this one works a little bit better for it if you have it. And then I've also got some glazing medium that will just also help thin out the paints as we work. Okay. I'm going to use, let's go ahead and use the chalk to start with. And then I may switch to the to the smaller pencil later. This is a pastel chalk pencil. You don't ever want to use just like regular graphite pencils like your, um, you know, 
things like this um, with the graphite lead because what the the graphite lead will um, bleed through the paint. So um, it doesn't cover well with acrylics. So you just want to use something that will cover well. So chalk, um, pastels, uh, charcoal will work um, like a white charcoal. I, I use that. Maybe not the dark charcoal. I'm not sure. But um, anyhow, something like that so that you can easily it just absorbs into the paint as you work so all right um to start with i'm just going to map out our main areas because mostly this is going to be light colors and we're going to have the dark kind of encroaching it's very similar to the dark um the dark river that we did in our beginner series a couple weeks ago um so this one award would be a good companion piece for that one i think Somebody was asking about that in chat, and I think it would be, it would actually work really well. You could do it this way and just do your bridge across here and just m bring your trees in a bit on the sides. Oh, so, you, so you wouldn't have to turn your head to look at it? Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it this way and hang it that way, no. Oh, th thanks for that pro tip. Yeah, okay. Check. <laughs> All right, so our bridge is kind of right on the, just below the half and third mark. It's kind of right in this area here. So I'm going to just make a mark kind of where the top of it's going to be and then make another mark where it's coming out. So it's going to curve down here. And it's got another line right here. I'm not going to actually draw in the bridge really right now. I just want to kind of have an idea of where it goes because our, our shoreline behind it kind of goes right up in here. So right in about there. And that is right about on the third. So I think we've got it in the right place here. And the bridge ends right there. Okay, so we've got our mark here. And then um, in my water, off to the side here, I'm gonna have like a little area where the bridge comes down. So this is gonna be dark, and then I just wanna make sure that I've got enough room for whatever this curve is. We're gonna mirror it in the water. It's gonna go kinda of like this. This is the bottom of the bridge here, and then there's that little rail that's what's causing this dark and it should be kind of like an eye shape if we do it right see that space right there should make a kind of an almond shape like that okay so i think that that's good i left enough room down here for our little squigglies our swan is going to live right in here he's going to be like right in there and that's a really bad example what it's going to look like but it's right in there somewhere <laughs> it looks i don't know what that looks like right now um and so then this is going to come out just a little bit so there's a little bit of a v of the land here there's a little bit of the land coming out here so i want to make sure i've got that and then we've got tree 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 all up and through here large tree coming out and it's actually coming out pretty far like that. And then all of our bushes on this side. So, and kind of come out at an angle like that. Bushes, dark, all this is very dark. And it's got reflections in the water. I think the land is somewhere in here, but this is so dark you can't really tell where the reflection starts and the land ends or vice versa. Okay, so somewhere in there like that. That's really all I'm gonna need because most of all this is going to be just all trees and things back here. But I just mainly need kind of an idea of where my horizon line is, sort of where my bridge generally is gonna be. And the mainly just so that I know where my shoreline is on either side of it. So it's got to come out just a little bit right here and meet up with the bottom of the bridge right here where it comes down into the water. Okay, I think that's good. Let's go ahead and go with that. 
All right, so I'm going to start with the large two inch aspen. I'm going to spray my paints down before I begin, and I'm also going to spray my canvas. That will give it some moisture. It'll open up the fibers of the canvas. Um, it is pre gessoed, so it's ready to go um, as far as paint goes. It'll accept the paint just fine, but um, having that little bit of moisture in it will help uh, the paint go on more smoothly. Okay, so. I was really looking at this background. There's a lot of a lot of different um, things going on, but the actual sky looks like it's it's kind of a foggy, um, almost yellow, not quite. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with white to start with, and add a little bit of maybe some Indian yellow hue, just for a pretty gold sky color yeah that'll be pretty so it's kind of a like a nice very very pale though it's not it's not yellow it's it's very pale just kind of whitish slightly gold color and I might even well no I don't want to add blue to it I was gonna say I was gonna, might add blue but I don't want to have a green sky Okay, and then over here, it's very kind of gold where the, um, and I'm gonna go ahead and go right over the top of this bridge. I'm not worried about it anymore. I just kind of mainly wanted to know where that line right there was, where it ended. And I am gonna have this color down in my water too, because water is reflective. So whatever colors are up in your sky, you're gonna see down in your water. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this down here as well. Just blending over that. You can see the chalk kind of um, adds a little color to the paint, but that's okay. I'm not worried about it. Okay, and then over here, I'm gonna get a little bit more water and I'm just dipping it in the corner there so I don't overdo it. You can see how much water it picked up just with me dipping the corner in. I'm gonna get the, and the, the, the tiniest little bit of the, um, Quinacridone burnt orange. Just a tiny little bit. There we go. It's not going to take much to tint this sky. Oh, how pretty. Okay. Very pretty. So we're going to bring that all the way down into our bushes right there and up in our sky. That yellow is still wet, so it's going to blend with it. Let's go ahead and put it down in our water over here too. Just the little bit of water that's going to be peeking through. Most of this down here is going to be dark, but there's a little bit of it peeking through. Look how pretty that is. Just a slight blush of that pink up there. Okay, so this is pretty dry already. It's It dries fairly quickly on these canvases, which is nice. So you can work, you know, pretty quickly from between colors. I'm going to go ahead and put some of this in the water too. Okay. And this, this brush is pretty much done for now. So I'm just going to get some water and wipe it off on a paper towel to try to get the paint out of it before I try to clean it because it's it's got too much paint still in it for me to try to w clean it out of my water. You can see how much paint's just coming off of it from just touching it in my water there. All right, so I'm going to leave it on my damp paper towel just to set and we'll once it's dry, we'll or not dry, keep it wet so it doesn't dry out. And then we'll clean it later. Okay. Sorry, I'm thinking three three things at the once and saying the wrong thing. <laughs> um, let me see. I think I want to, what do I want to do? I'm going to go ahead and do some of the, no, I'm going to do this. I need to just pull some of these colors away from the, thing though the sponge is so big I need to just grab some color and pull it down here so I'm going to get some of the yellow and this this scene is kind of an autumn scene so if you wanted to turn it more of in like a spring scene you could use more like brighter greens for this part um, 
I am going to use a little bit of green here with it and mix up my yellow, green. There we go. Let's go ahead and grab some more of that yellow and I'm going to get some of the, so this is Indian yellow and the burnt orange. Use some of that. It makes a really pretty pinkish color you can see right there that quinacridone burnt orange does. How are you doing today, hon? I am doing nasally. Nasally, I know. Me too. My sinuses are not happy with me right now. Yes, it is uh, allergy season here in Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah. Everything is blooming and my all the vehicles are turning yellow. <laughs> and so is the inside of my head, apparently. Cause yeah. <laughs> so we'll be sounding like this for the next couple of shows. Yeah, we'll be. For about a month and then it'll get better. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add some pink to it. Some pink hair. Added some white. I didn't clean out my brush, so it's got some of this green in it too. We're just gonna use all these different colors back here. Just want all kinds of different colors happening. Um, let me go ahead and clean this off. I'm gonna mix up some blue for my trees, my tree trunks. So those are going to be kind of a gray blue. I'm going to use blue and I'm going to use a little bit of black and that's probably too much. Just a little bit. Yeah, even that was almost too much. Oh, that's pretty close. Okay, so I've got that. I'm going to scrape some off to the side there and I'm going to add some phthalo blue to some of it. So I've got like a ultramarine blue and then I've got the yellow blue on this one here. So I've just got different blues to use for my tree trunks back here but they're all going to be in the same kind of value range. They're all going to be kind of muted. I haven't added the white to these these two yet but I will here. So I've got nice nice blues. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of the white here. I'm just going to leave this blue on here. It's not going to hurt anything and add it to my green here. But what I want to do is have a bunch of different colors, just so, you know, just different colors, but that are all in the same value range. So, and then what that'll do is kind of mute everything and make it all sort of soft and, and look like it's farther away back here. This may not be light enough. We may have to add more of our light color because you can see how light our, our background is. And that on top of that is going to be pretty obvious. So, but I do want to go slightly darker because we're going to go ahead and put that um, zinc white over the top of it too. So it can be a little bit darker um, to start with and it'll be, I think it'll be okay. So, all right, let's go ahead and add some of this to this yellow oxide burnt sienna, or no, I'm sorry, burnt orange and and Indian yellow hue. I don't know why I said that. Burnt sienna, Indian yellow hue. This one is the yellow oxide. Um, and I think these three, I'm not sure, with green. <laughs> it's green with yellow. Honestly, doesn't matter. It, it again, these are all just going to be, you know, slightly different tones. It it honestly does not matter that much. You can play with this, but the main the main thing you want to do is just make sure that these all are about the same pastel kind of color. That's that's what's important. It's not necessarily the color itself. It's just the value of the colors and making sure that they're the right lightness. Okay. Let's glove up here. See, I remembered. Dr. Angela is I know. preparing Mark for the helped fun. me measure my hands yesterday because I was <laughs> trying to order some gardening gloves online and didn't know what size I'm. My hands are large, apparently. Very mannish size hands. I did not know that. 
<laughs> They're like off the charts large. <laughs> so, uh, Better to paint with. Exactly. I guess they work. I don't. I'm not complaining. Um, all right. So we're gonna use the sponge, and I'm just gonna lightly sponge it over um, and just add some, you know, different stuff in the background here. I'm gonna start by adding some white to my sponge, so I have kind of a base of this lighter color in here and then I'm going to let's go ahead over here we'll start with this gold or you know um sorry the magenta type color here oh look how pretty that is and we are definitely simplifying this image so um if you're like that's not exactly what it is in the picture that we're 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 gonna take some artistic liberties with it just because I want to simplify it slightly so anywhere where I get something that I don't like, I can just take the back end of the sponge and kind of soften it off. Um, so I got some of that blue in there a little early. I didn't really want that color over here. So I'm just going to dab it off. And my background should be dry. So before you do this, make sure your background's dry. Um, otherwise, you can lift off your background colors. You don't want that to happen. So, all right. So let's do this. Get a little bit more. I'll get a little bit of this orange as well. It's really more kind of a coral color. Okay, there we go. This is the color I wanted over here. Go a little bit darker with it in the corners. But mainly we're just kind of adding some modeling to our sunlight. We've got all these trees back here that are kind of cutting off the sun and creating different colors. So let's go ahead and just add this color all over. To this area. Look how pretty that is. Okay. So <coughs> somebody would like to know. I'm going to turn my sponge and use the back side of it that's clean with the next color. Somebody would like to know, yes. How wet is the sponge? It's not you um you get it wet fully, so I'll put it in the in the water and then wring it out as much as I can. So get it fully saturated and then get it so that it's just damp. And that's that's where you want to work with it. You do not want it dripping water because otherwise you won't be able to control what's going on to your canvas here. Been there, done that. Not fun. Okay, so be sure when you do this though too that you keep these paints wet um, as you work so they don't dry out because we need these colors down in our water and we're not going to add them yet. So um, just be sure that you're, you're leaving some of this to use later. Don't use it all up right now. And if you do, make sure you mix some more before you go off and do something else. All right, it doesn't take long for me to forget what I've mixed. <laughs> like literally two seconds and then I forgot. So just do yourself a favor there. All right, getting some yellow. Want some brighter yellow here. Getting some Indian yellow hue and, and the cadmium yellow medium. And then my white. So I'm going to use that. And there's some areas in here where I've got some brighter sunlight happening. And we can't, we're going to probably put some color on after we put our tree trunks as well. So, but this is our main like colors that are in the very background. There's only a little bit of that sky color peeking through, but you know, so don't cover it up completely. I, I pretty much have covered up completely, but um, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and use it this way. I'm gonna use it in the water this way and I'm just gonna smudge it side to side here to get that color in the water. Since I've got it on my sponge, might as well use it, right? Okay. That's working well. Okay, there we go. And now I'm gonna find another spot, maybe go back over to that red or the green area and get a little bit of that blue. And get in the ultramarine blue one. Maybe a little bit of the thala blue too. And we're just gonna use that over here. And there's some trees over here that are a little bit darker. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and put some of this 
in my water, trying to keep it side to side as much as I can. That's our horizon line right there, so just trying to work with that. There we go, smudge that out a little bit. You can use a brush for this too, but I'm just, since I have it already on my, my sponge here, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. All right, so I think that that's pretty good. This is gonna be that large cedar tree right here, so I'm not really worried about this little area over here too much. It's gonna be really dark. But I think that's pretty good. And again, if I get too much of an in, in any one area, what I can do is get some of my white on my sponge and just kind of go through and kind of pick up some of this color, maybe soften it up, blend it in a little bit. I can even use a wet or a damp paper towel and dab over some of the areas and just kind of blend in those colors a little bit so that they're not so sponge-like, just kind of softens everything up. And in some areas you want it a little bit more like, you know, obvious tree texture. In some areas you can, you know, use it to kind of smudge it out and blend it in. Okay, that's good. Let's go ahead and I'm going to add some of the white back in just in a few areas. Okay, and then I'm going to use that dark, dark side. I'm going to get some of the orangey color. Just a few little areas and just kind of going over this top that area that I smudged out. Just adding a few little areas. Just having all these different layers of color really helps add depth to the painting. All right, I think that that's good. I don't really want to overdo this too much. Or at all. <laughs> Got a lot of colors going on here, so I think that's probably good enough. Let's go ahead and switch to, and I want to get, well, I'm going to get a little bit of water on here, just on that paint side, and set it off to the side of my sponge. If I have to use it again, though, I'm going to have to get that water out before I use it. Let me go ahead and take my gloves off. And we'll go ahead and start putting in our tree trunks. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this blue, a little bit of glaze, just to make it more fluid. And there's a tree right here. Yeah, I think that's probably a good color. I like looking at it, looking at a reference, just trying to see if that color is similar to what I'm seeing on there, and I think it is. And what you can do is add some of your background color to your, which we've got this color in our background, in our trees a little bit, so it should be kind of in here, but if it seems like it's going on and it's like a little too obvious or a little bit too dark, what you can do is add some of your background color to this and it'll fade it out into the background a little bit more. Ooh, which brush are you using this right now? This is the number six, no, four, four round in the Summit, Summit series. It's actually kind of a little bit big for the smaller branches, so it's good for the little little branch or the big ones but I'm going to be switching to a smaller brush here in a minute I'm 
one thing with trees is that, like I kind of made a, a large branch there, so I had to go back in and match it up to the bottom part of the tree. You don't want a thicker branch at the top of your tree. So you want to make sure your trees are always tapering to smaller branches as they go up away from the base tree trunk. Okay, and then as I get closer to the sun area, I'm going to get more of this reddish color and do something like that. Okay, you did it. What? You brought out the brush. What brush? With the mod kit on it. I don't know what you're talking about. So explain to everybody what the tape's all about. <laughs> the mod kit on it um it's just because of the I cracked the handle the paint or the I probably left it in the water too long and it cracked so I just add tape to keep it I don't like the texture of the of the crumbly crumbly handle so I just tape it plus the little crumbles can get in your drop off while you're painting. It's no fun. And of course you have to use cute duct tape. Well yeah. That's that's a given. If it's not cute, I mean why bother? I'm gonna get smaller brush now. I'm gonna go ahead and get my script that's, liner that'll make That's what? the thinking I took when I chose my wife. <laughs> what? It's not cute why why, why bother? <laughs> Some smaller leaves, like leaves and and uh, branches and things here. Just using the script liner. Make sure when you're using a script liner or any liner brush, you're adding lots of fluid to your paint so that they can flow. Otherwise, they will just paint really thick, uneven lines. They don't. You got you got to have fluid in your paint. Will not work without it. Just water or and just painting different little branches, crisscrossing them, so and doing some smaller ones in between. Little sticks and things. <coughs> sorry. Didn't catch it in time there, sorry. Mark was trying. He saw the hand going up. He tried. I tried. I, I caught the last part he tried of it. To block it. So somebody wants to know: Would hockey tape work? <laughs> I don't know. Is hockey tape cute? I'm not sure. It's typically either black or white. Well, I guess so. I don't know. I told him that I didn't know. I didn't think you would know what it that it even existed. <laughs> Too right. She's Too from right. the desert of Southern California. I am. Hockey wasn't a big thing out there. No, I never saw a hockey game until I was, uh, I had a boyfriend at 15 that took me to his hockey game. Oh, please elaborate. I need to hear about this. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't you. Well, I know. <laughs> We didn't go out for very long. Mm. I was kind of fickle at that age. Dylan met Mark. It wasn't much before Mark. He was the last one. Yeah, exactly. No, I was only 15, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so again, kind of just moving from this blue to this gold on this side. This, these yellows are, not yellows. Why can't I say the right color today? <laughs> Oh my gosh, it is what peach. Yes, thank you. Peach, peachy pink colors over here. Those are the colors. 
So we've and I've mixed up a little bit of this blue into them so that they've got a little bit of that color. Just and these are the very faint ones that are very very far away. These aren't the ones that are in the foreground. So here I printed it out here so we could talk about it. What I'm painting right now are these ones. So like all these ones that are very far back here that you can barely see. That's what we're painting right now. All this stuff and. Uh, I kind of did these ones um, a little bit darker here, these ones in the in the foreground, but then the ones back here, I kind of added a little bit more of the lighter color too to make them a little bit more faint. So that's what we're doing here. So do you think this one is beginner friendly? I think it could be, yeah. I don't think that, um, I don't know. I mean. I think it may be. Well, I mean, it, there's a lot of simple techniques individually. Right. Bringing them together might be a little bit so. Right. I mean, if it's your first painting, I would say no. No. But if you've been doing, you know, a dozen or so paintings. And, if yeah. you've done my other beginner series things, I think this one would be one that you could tackle. And I almost did it for the beginner series, but I thought it would take too long. That's why I didn't do it, because I just figured that it would be longer than two hours. And I try to keep the, the, two, the two hour ones to, you know, Saturdays. Hopefully not longer than two hours, but, you know, right around there probably, I'm guessing. I don't know. We haven't gotten very far today yet, so I can't really tell. I don't know what I'm, what is happening with that branch. Let me take that out because it looks weird. And like octopus branch there. Just kept, kept growing arms. Okay. I guess that that's the hydra that I'm thinking of, right? It keeps you take them, take a branch away, and it keeps you just keep adding, grows back. It's kind of what. All right, I don't know what I'm saying. Just keep on going here. Mark's not talking to me, so. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hope you having a great Saturday. All right, so I'm going to get the Deerfoot Stippler. This will give me a little bit more control, and I'm going to go ahead and use um, a little bit of this blue that I have going on here. I'm going to get a little bit of the white at it. Yeah, I've got a little bit of green here too, and I'm just going to use these, these trees here that I've put in here and just add a little bit of this color. We have a little bit of it in the background, but I kind of smudged most of it out, so I'm just going to add back in a little bit of this color just a few areas here what that'll do is kind of it kind of breaks up the line of the trees just a little bit softens up everything slightly so smudges it all out and um, as I get mo most of the paint off here I'm going to use it in this area over here so that I'm not full strength and just kind of blend it over Okay, I think that's pretty good. So kind of got this soft blendy background of trees and things. And if you need to, you can add more to this background area, but I think we've, I think we've done okay. Um, so let's go ahead and use the Filbert here. And I'm gonna grab some of this blue and I'm gonna use it on my shoreline here. This is just the background area that's just barely peeking through our bridge. So I'm going to use it up, kind of smudge out this area here, just at the base of my trees. So pulling it up just a little bit and then pulling it down too. So I'm just kind of adding this smudge of blue all along that area there. And it should kind of just disappear that shoreline a little bit and get a little bit of lighter color and put it in here. And if you need to make it look like bushes or whatever you can, but most of this is going to be covered up by our bridge, so only a little bit of it's going to peek through. This is all going to be bridge area here. It should be if we place it right. If I've placed it right. I got a little too much of that blue up too high, so I'm just going to take my paper towel and kind of dab it off. See how that works? Just kind of 
pulls off excess paint. There we go. Okay. And then let's go ahead and use the white. And I'm going to get some of this Indian yellow hue. That was our sky color, right? And I'm just going to kind of hit the water with the whoop. Oh, I, I put it through my blue paint over here. I had blue right here. My paper towel picked it up when I wiped it. Okay, find a clean spot there. Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to go on my water. I've got the tree colors now in my water here, thankfully. So I've got all this nice color happening back here. And I'm just going to add. Keep picking up other colors here. Add my white on my water. Side to side. It's mostly just up in this area back in here that there's some highlights. So that's all I'm going to do. Just want to kind of highlight a little bit right there. And I'm going to get some more of this blue hair and make sure that I have the blue down in my water. Right below where that tree line is. There we go. Okay. And make sure that I'm going far enough in on these sides here too, so that I need to bring some of this blue over here because, you know, my bridge is coming all the way out to here. So I want to make sure that I have color in my water down here. So the one I put my, my bridge in their stuff down here for it to behind it. Make sense? Yes. Good. I think you're talking to me. Are you us? Okay, good. Because I was listening for once. Good, I think I appreciate it. Hey, no problem. <laughs> I'm here for you, babe. <laughs> appreciate it. Thanks for taking time out of your Saturday hanging out with us today, everybody. I know it's pretty yes. outside today here in Arkansas, so we'll be getting some sunshine. We have people from all over the world in today. Nice. I'm yeah. going to put some of this blue down, down here, just tapping in kind of off from here. Now let's go ahead and just use it kind of under here just to add if that brush didn't work which mine didn't really do a great job the this one will do a better job of kind of doing that light foliage look so let's go ahead and just do it all the way across here on this side too let's just why not right it'll kind of sort of peek through our tree over here okay so now we've got our background done for the most part let's go ahead and work on our foreground Um, I mean, the, the technique that you use here for the background <clears throat> uh -huh. can be used as the base for a lot of different things. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you could leave it like this or just do a couple trees here. You didn't even have to do the bridge. Right, right. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of... We have done this on several paintings. Mm -hmm. We've done something very similar to this on several paintings. So... So right. you could do We're this one and forward. then do the tank in the front, in the foreground. You know, it's a good <laughs> setting. I'm just throwing things throwing out there ideas that, out that you could, you know, use. That you yeah. Do. Okay. I, that's about all I've come up with. <laughs> so far, I'm, I'm working. So far. So far. Okay. All right. So I want to make sure my top of my bridge is right here, or I'm sorry, bottom of my bridge is right here, somewhere. Ish. That 
is not working. I don't want anything that's going to be too hard. I don't want it to rub off my paint. Let me try this white chalk here. I may have made this a little too dark. We'll see. Fish eye or just eye shape there. Okay. And then the top of the bridge is a little bit less curved. So it's more like that. And then the top railing of the bridge is matching this, so it's kind of somewhere in here. More like that. Okay, so there's our bridge. I think that's about the right size. I might bring it in a slight bit. I feel like it's a little bit wide. Let me see. Let me let me do the railings and see. One, two, three, four, okay. One, two, three. And then this should no, that's about right, I think. Because the greenery is gonna come over this whole area right here and come out into the so I think I think we're pretty close. All right, let's go ahead and do the greenery that's going to be behind it just slightly. So I'm going to get the deer foot stippler, and let me keep these paints wet that we've already got mixed because I might need them later. But I'm going to go ahead and mix up some dark green. I'm going to use the green and the ultramarine blue, Zala blue, make a dark teal. And then I'm gonna add some burnt umber to it, which will just make it kind of burnt umber and the blue makes gray. So basically we're just adding a dark gray to our green here. And let's go ahead and use it in our background here. So I'm gonna tilt it so that just the tip is touching and dab that out into the water. And don't be afraid of doing it really dark because we really want a good contrast here. And so go ahead and kind of dab our line of foliage. It's gonna go all the way down here. And this is probably not even dark enough so I'm gonna go ahead and grab some purple use the purple down here really dark all the way along the bottom of that bridge right there and should come up to just about to where those trees are so go ahead and bring it up I'm gonna use a little bit of the lighter color maybe grab even grab some of this lighter green and use that up in here catching the light it's kind of turning it a little bit lighter and then there should be kind of a diagonal right here from this let me see if I'm getting that angle right it looks about right okay and then yeah there's like an angle of some of these Leafies coming out. Get some more of that green on the very tip of my brush. Maybe a little bit more of the brighter green. And use the very tip of it and draw it out in a couple places. Just kind of draw some borders on our bush here. Okay, we'll add highlights to it later and there'll be a nice bright um, bush right there. So that'll be good. So I'm going to go ahead and get a little glaze and add it to this green. 
I'm going to use it down here in my water. I'm just going to Somebody would like to know, could they add red to green to darken it? Yes. Yeah, you can use red. It's opposite on the color wheel, so it works great for that. Is that a trick question? <laughs> uh, that was no. a real question. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> Did you just say that or something? No, oh, I just... Okay. <laughs> I was like, uh, Usually when you say that, you had just talked about it. No, it's so <laughs> just being silly. No, yes, you can. And um, there's all kinds of, um, you know, here, I'll show you the, we don't have a pure red out right now, but we can use the magenta with a little bit of yellow to make a red. And then add it to my green. It kind of makes it brown. You have to have more of the green than red. And it depends on, you know, your green and the red that you use. But yes, you, you can make it darker that way. I, I prefer purple just because purple is like darker already on the color wheel. It's, you know, one of the darkest true colors that you can use. So it works well as a... I'm going to pull down to do my reflection for these little bits in the water right here. And then I want to make sure that I don't do my reflections of my trees too far in because this is going to be my bridge here. So this the bridge is kind of what we're seeing on this reflection here. But they come out right in this way. And this these bushes back here are a little bit less than in the photograph. We've kind of cropped our photograph the edge of it off a little bit in our in our case. The really from the split of the two trees right here is this whole part is cut off. So we're kind of condensing it over here. Let's go ahead and use it over here. We're gonna have to mix up some more of this green for over here. Burnt umber. So. Kind of making the water the same darkness as the trees there. Okay. And the same thing goes here. That darkness goes all the way down to here. This whole area. I'm just making sure that my edges are kind of blended out like this. You can see how I'm kind of doing these lines in the water. That just kind of gives it that reflection feel. Go ahead and do all the way dark, all the way to the corner there. Okay. We'll be bringing this out again. Here right now it looks kind of lopsided, but we'll be bringing it in when we do the bridge. All right, I want to do the reflection of this tree though before I get too much farther. So I'm going to use the glazing medium and my same blue that I used here. And Very lightly wiggling it side to side to do my little tree here. 
I need to a little bit less wide than I did there. And I did the angle wrong. Okay, hold on. Let me do this again. I had it tilted. I wasn't paying attention to the angle. So it's angling this way. So I need to angle it this way. I kind of came it straight down with it. I'm going to use a smaller brush too because that brush was a little bit big. Uh, let's see. I want to use, let's go ahead and use this one. This is the too flat. It was the right color though. So I need to see. All right. We're right here. We're about right there. So I want to be about that distance away. You can kind of measure it just to get your angle right. So you know kind of where to end up. So I should end up right about here and I kind of have placed my finger there. Should have done this to begin with. Sorry. Like that. Okay. I'll forgive you. And then this one is going to be the opposite. So it's going to come this way. And then go back out. So it's only about like that far in before it changes direction. So come this way. And then it's going to kind of come back out this way. So I'm going to change it. It doesn't have to be exact, you know, but just kind of get sort of the same-ish. Just this major trees here, that's all. this one with the same color as we did up here so get that and this one's going this way so like that so it's gonna end up right over in here somewhere. Well, let's go ahead and just gonna put in some random little bits there's little trees up in here so I just do some little random blips on here. Just kind of wiggle. I'm kind of blending it out a little bit too so that it's soft. go ahead and do these big trees right here. So these ones, I'm going to go ahead and use the blue and the burnt umber. I'm going to, I grabbed a little bit of green, but it's going to be more brown. Let's go ahead and get the burnt orange there too. Just got a lot of colors here. Just kind of brown, blue. so it's a little bit easier for it to go flow off my brush here. I got, I got some of that white and specks in it. I need to clean that off. It's flaking where it dried, so it's adding little white flakes to my paint. I don't want that to happen. Well, while you're scraping, I'll remind everybody about patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art, yeah. where all the cool kids hang out. 
No, but seriously. I have to be cool for that to work. I don't yeah. think that works. Well, you're the leader. I know, but like I'm saying, uh, that's my point. Oh, well, you're cool. <laughs> so anyway, there's we have traceables, bonus contents, more teaching of things like that. So yeah, levels. So check it out. Different stuffs. We appreciate the over 3,500 supporters we have right now on Patreon. We thank you so much Yes. for that support. Yes. It makes these free tutorials possible. It does. 100%. It also helps buy some chocolate sometimes. Just saying. <laughs> I want it more blue than this. you get the kind of the main um, tree trunks on here then you can switch to a smaller brush to do some of this finer branches and just do as many or as little as you want you know it doesn't have to be exactly like the photograph but I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the script liner here and use that to do my little branches that kind of go off and over the bridge just wiggling and just pay attention to the width so just making sure that my the end of my branches is thinner than where they start Here where it connects to the tree too, there's usually a little bit of a thicker area, just right there. You can press down a little bit harder to get a thicker line and then as I go out, just varying my pressure on my brush, bringing it up so that it's not down as hard and getting a thinner line. It takes practice, but um, the more you work with the liner brush, the I think the easier it is, and the more it's actually pretty meditative. Uh, I find, especially doing things like these tree branches, because you're not having to do it exact. You know, you can just kind of let it wander where you want it to go, and as long as you kind of get the the right you know shapes and things. You can be pretty creative with what you do with your branches. They're all going to be different. And uh, which brush is that again? This is the script liner. I find it's easier to use a script liner for these longer branches. They just it they come off a lot easier and smoother. Thickening up some of these branches here. And there's some little little trees out here. I don't think I'm gonna do all of the trees. I'm just gonna do these main main ones here. You can do as many little branches as you want. There's a ton of little branches on this one. going quickly and kind of doing some little smaller branches make sure they have a branch to stick to obviously but Oh, 
All right. Let's do one more big one right here. This one I'm going to add, whoop. Getting. My brushes fell into the paint there. Mm. I'm going to get some water on this large brush that's been sitting out for a while. Just make sure it's <coughs> not drying out on me. This tree here, I'm going to go with the more golden color. So I'm going to use the burnt sienna and add it to this blue that we had for the other tree. Burnt sienna, burnt quinacridone, burnt orange, and then this blue, the ultramarine blue with the brown and stuff here. Just whatever color you use here, just add some. Burnt sienna and quinacridone burnt orange to it. I'm gonna split this tree a little bit differently than it is in the picture just to give it a little bit different look. I don't like that it was going straight up. So I'm just making it a little bit more wiggly. Why not? here into one just to simplify the scene a little bit and then using that dark green at the base here to blend it in so it blends into my foliage down here okay some water to this. Let's just add some more branches across. How's it going, hun? It is going good. Anybody here, or are they all outside enjoying the weather today? Uh, well, the, we got several people with us. Nice. Some of them may be outside enjoying the weather while Ooh, enjoying painting. But That's a good idea. Yeah. I've been doing that this week. I've been sitting outside on the back porch. Thus the stuffy nose, but <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> I am so ready for a garden. We are so close. We are within, I think, next week we're going to start putting out our putting out our tomatoes and stuff. Got yeah. them all, all the babies lined up out in the back porch today on back deck. We killed some this week, so that's good. <sighs> Don't. I know. I was really sad about it. Still morning. It's still too fresh. Don't, I'm not ready to talk about it. So out of, out of my two cauliflower and two broccoli plants, one plant lived. Not sure. But we don't know which one We don't is. know what it, which one it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, there's a second one that's trying to hang on, but we'll see. Yeah. I doubt I'll get anything out of it. Onions are doing great. Onions are, yeah, you can't kill those things. Blueberry bush is doing well. Yeah. And the two the strawberries look like they're starting to some, trying to. Some of them are coming back. Trying to. Two of the lettuces out of the, like the thirty some on that I planted lived. So <laughs> 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 here at the Anderson Horticultural Hospice, <laughs> we <laughs> we're trying to grow garden. <laughs> it's it's uh, yeah true don't really know well the tomatoes it was our fault i was like 
it's not going to get that cold. Well, first I put them out in the they sun. They don't know what long. they're talking about. Well, yeah, that's true. I put them out there. That's we had true. we transplanted them, and then I left them in the sun too long the first time. Yeah. So they were already struggling from that. Mm-hmm. Then the frost got some of them. Yeah. Then we left them out. Oh well, live and learn. Yeah. There's still time to plant new babies. They might. They might grow late, later in the season, but. Oh yeah, good. I mean, last year we wound up with ton of tomato plants even the ones that we didn't think were going to live did real yeah, well so. yeah they did they they bounced back okay i'm mixing the white with my quinacridone burnt orange here i'm adding it to this brown that i've just used i'm gonna put in a tree just kind of back in here just a little a little bit darker than what i had just do kind of a couple of like mid ground trees here In here, okay. They turned out to be because twinsies, didn't they? So let's like change it up a <laughs> little so they don't look like twins. Okay. I just did the same exact thing on both of those. Okay. Let's just take this one out. And then on this tree here, I don't know if we want to do it or not. There's like the sun, the sun is peeking through the tree, making a bright spot on it. So we can do that like right in here and we'll just do this quinacridone burnt orange right here with the white. Kind of just turn this tree trunk brighter right along that edge right there and then get a quarter inch deer foot stippler let me get a little bit of white and a little bit of the zinc white and I'm just gonna tap in right here we have a question okay uh, the person said that they had thought they heard that adding water to acrylic paints is not a good idea because it would cause the acrylic to flake off. That is, um, that, that is, I've never had that happen. What can happen is it can uh, underbind. So when you do your upper layers, they can, it'll wipe them off. That, that I've had happen. But I have not had the paint flake off. So, um, and water is totally fine to use with acrylics. Just don't use too much of it. That's that's the main thing. You just don't want to, with, with craft acrylics, craft acrylics are like way more binder than, than acrylic paint uh, color so craft acrylics you can use just about as much water as you want and they're not gonna underbind with heavy body acrylics there's more pigment involved um, and in less binder in the paints so they do say I think that the I think that the um, recommendation is like 30 per, don't do more than 30 percent with the, it's either 30 or 40 percent with water so which is still like if you think about how much you know how thick the paints are you know you're you've got to add a lot of water to make it underbind so it's not it's never it's never been an issue for me um the only time i've ever had an issue like i said is if i have tried to um I'm, what I need need to do here now is let this dry. I'm talking and not letting this dry. <laughs> I, I keep adding more layers, and I haven't let the under layer dry, and I'm just scrubbing off the layer that I just did. Um, but if you put paint down and you don't, and uh, with too much water, 
um, too thinly, what it, what it just, it won't stick to your canvas well. And so what'll happen is when you put your next layer on, if you scrub over it too hard, it'll just lift off the cam the color that you've got on there. So that's all. And then how do you know when to use water versus glaze medium? Um, I use a glazing medium if I know I'm going to need to use a lot of water. So, you know, when I'm when I'm thinning down my paints, um, I'll add a little bit of glaze. If I want my paints to be more transparent, I will add the glaze. Um, I'm adding this, this burnt orange color to some of my trees over here just to add some of the color to my foliage back here. Um, let's go ahead and do over this with my zinc white before I get too much farther along because I want to have that background done. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to use my larger brush for this. Let's use the, let's use this one, the 10 bright. So I'm going to use my zinc white and some glaze. So I want my my color to be transparent. The glaze also gives me a little bit of extra drying time versus water. But I'm adding both glaze and water. And usually when I'm thinning out my paints, I'm doing that. I'm adding both glaze and water. Not hardly ever am I just adding one. Okay, so actually this is my... I'm not having to add too much of this here, but I just want these kind of rays of light coming through. They're kind of coming at a diagonal, which I don't really understand since my sunlight's down here, but whatever. It may be just the way the sun is filtering through. I'm gonna go ahead and just go over all of this with a little bit of the zinc wide. All of this should be dry before you do this, so just make sure that you wait for this to dry completely before you do this part. I really want to get a lot of this zinc white around this tree here where that white's coming through. The light's coming through. And then do some streaks through my trees here, which these aren't really needing too much. I think we got a pretty good color going on with with what we did, so I'm not worried too much about this. But I do want a few like little streaky things coming through. Normally I would say pick your sunlight and do your streaks that way, but I'm not seeing the I'm seeing these rays coming through this way, so I'm not really sure why it's doing that. It just yeah. may be the way the sunlight is filtering through the trees. So, what were you saying? Okay. You know, it's kind of weird. But, whatever. It's... They may have added this. I wonder if they added this as an after effect or something. And that's why it's got two different sun sources, but... I'm going to go ahead and put some of this in the water, too, if I need it. You may not need it. I think it's a uh, alien spaceship. Is that what it is? That's glowing, yeah. So they were taking a picture of that, and or they're taking a picture of someone and just happened to catch the alien ship. <laughs> I'm not, not necessarily a fan of this sunlight thing happening right here. Looks a little bit weird coming through that mm -hmm. right there on those trees the way I did it. I don't know. Should I leave it out? I would take it out. Okay. I think I'm just going to take it out. After everybody at home, just try to put it in three Sorry. times. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So watch the video first. Take yeah. some mental notes. I just, I don't like, I you know, I just, you don't like yep. it. Leave it, leave it off. It doesn't have, it doesn't have to be in there. Okay, there we go. I might just add just a little bit of like some 
leafy things just to kind of hide that there. Okay. Good. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and add. I think that's all I'm going to do as far as the trees, though. I don't think I'm going to do any more on those trees. You can do as many trees as you want on yours. I'm going to go ahead and use this brush here now and try to do this cedar tree that's yeah, over here. water running down your canvas right I now. I see that. I don't know how I did that. It's on the right side. Did you see it? Yeah, I just dabbed okay. it right. off. Okay. Let's get some of this green here. Some of my green from there. Some blue. Got a little bit of purple. That's a good color, I think. That'll work. Okay. Um, get a little bit of water. Just wanted a little bit more fluid. I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow oxide just to make it a little bit more of a golden green. Okay, so I'm going to test it on here. I think I'm going to kind of flatten out my brush and then tap it. I want those bristles to separate out just a little bit so that I can get some... Again, I haven't really used this brush for this, so I don't know if it's going to be appropriate or not. It really... Um, normally I would use like a hog bristle brush, but I don't have one in this size from Princeton, so I'm going to... I don't even know if they make them. I'm not sure this is going to work. No, it's it's not sticking together right for me. Okay, so note to self, that one, no. It was worth a shot. Yeah. It was worth a shot. It got a little too clumpy. It was like clumping together, and it wasn't separating out for me like I needed it to to do the foliage. So we'll just use this one. This is a number eight blender, eight, three eighths into blender, I'm sorry. This time of year is always fun when we're medicated with our allergy medicine. Allergy when, meds. Who knows what's going to happen? My brain is. I had a root canal this week, and I've been like just dealing with that all week. I canceled my Thursday class, which I hate doing because that always puts me back a week. But oh well, it's. I do feel better though today than I did Thursday, <laughs> so. <laughs> That's good. I have a root canal Monday, and it was it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> I've had them before, but that's one why I had to go for a specialist because it was all calcified and yucky. So they thought, no fun. And they thought they might have to knock you out to do it. Yeah, they did, but, then, but they didn't. They but they did, did it in the didn't. end, so that was Which good. I, yeah, it was good. Except for then they gave me a shot through the roof of my mouth. If they had knocked me out, they wouldn't have had to do that. So I'm next time I might just ask for the... Get knocked out? Yeah. <laughs> it's almost <laughs> worth it because that shot at the roof of my mouth was the worst part of the whole thing before and after. But then I'll have to be there and film you as you come out. That's to true. To see what you say. That is true. All right. So just doing kind of a roughly, I don't know, egg shape kind of to this bush. Fluffy egg. It's got a, the bristles coming out the top here. Kind of in a line. Probably could have used my fan brush too now that I've come to think of it, but actually I think I might want to try that. I'm not loving this look here. Get some 
water, a little bit of glaze. Get that dark, dark green, a little bit of burnt umber. Okay, I'm gonna set it down and kind of flick it. Pull it down slightly. There we go. This is the Select 4 bristle fan. There we go. It's working better. It's giving me kind of those needle-like, but I looked away for a second. I looked up at the camera. Oh, all right. Don't look up while you're painting, Inge. Kind of like Chef John says, don't let the painting win. <laughs> what does he say? He says, don't let the food win. Don't let the food win yeah. when he makes a mistake. Right. <laughs> I like it. Don't let the paint win. You're, you're the boss. Okay, so... I think I'm liking that. It's almost like a Christmas tree shape. Only thicker. There are little bits of light coming through this, so you can, you can leave a little bit of the light color. And then as we get down towards the bottom, I'm going to kind of merge it with this and bring it in a little bit so it's going to kind of curve back down right here. Like that. So, it, again, kind of egg-shaped for Easter. Happy Easter, everybody, by the way. Our son's not going to get to come. We're kind of sad. He had a COVID shot and not feeling great, so he's not coming for Easter. Spencer was all excited. We were planning on an Easter egg hunt with adult uh, prizes since they're, you know, Nathan's almost 30 and Spencer's like 29. Or no, 19. Nathan's 29. So we give gift cards instead of candy and the eggs. But now Nathan Spencer's getting all the prizes. I told Nathan. Well. He was kind of, he said, well, if I feel better, I'll come. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the. He's, he's only going to get half. The prizes. <laughs> we'll save the other ones for Nathan. It works. He just won't have the hunting fun. Oh, okay. Well, don't tell him that. Then he won't show up for sure. <laughs> I hope he's not watching. <laughs> Hi, Nathan. Okay, so here's these trees here. Let's go ahead and do across in the water here. Here. And it helps if you just do it like kind of at the same time as you do your trees. I kind of forgot to do these ones. But even these ones up here, you know, if you just kind of get that background color in your water first and then you can just add, when you add a tree up here, just add your reflection in the water below it. Oh, I'm totally off camera, honey. Well, I'm way off camera. All this up here. Okay. That's where we need to you move from. Okay. Well, People you gotta let me know. I know, but you gotta let me know when you're zoomed in so I'll know that you're. that I'm on off camera. Sorry. Let's go ahead and add some, I'm going to get some white and some Indian yellow. 
different little hue and add it to my green here. Just make a light green color and I'm just going to use that to highlight this side of the tree on the top areas and some of the branches kind of in the middle here. And really just kind of tapping and kind of pulling down a little bit. Tap and pull down a little bit just to get a little highlight on some of these branches. Most of this is in darkness, so we don't have to do all of it. But just a little bit of a hint of some, some stuff going on there. Let's go ahead and use it on the top of these two while we've got it. I'm just gonna use that dark to blend down the bottom. Okay. Let's go ahead and use this with some yellow. I'm just mixing it into this green here. And I'm gonna use it for this bush right here. Now, if you want to, you could add, you could add like colored bushes here. So if you wanted it more spring-like, you could add like pinks or, you know, whatever you wanted here to make it more like spring-ish. Totally up to you. I'm going to use the same color over here, just that kind of bright green there, and then I'm going to use a little bit of it in the water. Right there. Let's use a little bit of it in the water. Okay. a little bit of the Indian yellow or the sorry quinacridone burnt orange I don't even know why they let me talk some days <laughs> I swear <laughs> I'm having so much trouble just expressing color today it's so weird all right again just a little bit of whatever color I'm using up there down in the water all right, so that's about all I'm gonna do for the for the trees and things, I think. Um, you could put another big bush right here if you wanted to. Um, we'll see, I'll put the bridge in and see if, we, if I feel like we need it or not, but let's go ahead and do that, 3.30, so. All right, so an hour and a half, we're not doing too bad. Not too shabby. Um, let me see, what do I want to do my bridge with? I think. I think this bridge is gonna bring the whole painting together. I think so too. I think it, it'll make a big difference. Um, Especially the left and right sides. So color of the bridge, really whatever you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and use like black and burnt umber here, I think. And I think I'm going to use the fluid acrylic because I think it'll, it'll just make it a little easier to do these lines on the bridge, especially the small lines. I'm going to go ahead and scrape off all of this extra paint I got going on here. Trying to 
side. I guess I'll go ahead and save some of that. Most of that is probably getting dry now, but I'll leave it just in case it's usable. Spray it one more time. Okay, so let's go ahead and put out that black. And I'm going to go ahead and use the angle brush. You could use any kind of round brush, but I, I think the angle might work for me. We'll see. If I, if I have trouble with the lines, I'll switch, but I'm going to start with the angle and see how it goes. So I've already got my line, my chalk line there. I'm just going to go ahead and mark that out. That's the bottom, that's the walk part you walk on right here. The bottom part of the bridge, and it actually kind of floats out this way at the very end. I need to kind of do that. What were you saying? People who come here for bridge facts. So the bottom part's the part that people walk on. Well, it's just not, one, making sure that they don't think it's the very, very bottom. It's not. Oh, okay. It's the part that's the part that you walk on. this in so that's why I'm having to kind of take it out because I made a mistake on that. Drawing in this little bit that kind of curves up. Okay. So it goes across and curves up right, right where it meets the shore there. Flattens out right there. Okay then there is a little bit of it that curves down right here that continues that arch right here so just kind of continuing that down I need to wipe it away where it kind of goes down into the bushes and I'll probably have to put the bushes on top of it again Okay, so then just right up underneath this, I'm going to do another curve. And this time it's going to go down to about right here. It's not going to quite touch. Let's just make sure I get that curve right. Somewhere in there. Do it thin and then I can thicken it out to where I need it to be. So I'm going to come up underneath it and widen that out. This part is definitely not beginner friendly right here. So this is going to be your hardest part of the bridge for sure. 100%. <laughs> okay, make sure that this has got something dark right un underneath it for it to attach to right here. And then I'm going to use the, let's go ahead and use this with the glazing medium. And I'm going to mark it with my chalk just so I can see where it goes so I'm gonna mark that eye right there and then oh, there's a little bit of the top part so right about there and I'm just gonna go ahead and use that glazing medium with this to do the kind of faint zigzaggy lines in the water. Keep 
from side to side. This whole area kind of fills in with zigzag lines, so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of put them in now that I've got this color on my brush. going to be some lines through this way. Kind of wait to put the rest in because I'm not exactly sure where they're going to go so I don't want to do them and then have to move them. So. Making sure this is nice and dark where it meets the shoreline because I don't want in any thing there that interferes with that dark. Or, you know, I don't want it to look weird where it attaches, so just blend it all in. This bush here also comes out. Oh, I lifted off color right there. It's weird. Must have stuck to my hand. Alrighty, so let's go and do the top. Actually, let's go and switch to the smaller brush now. And get the two script liner. And I'm gonna go just above this with the railing. So we'll go. Try to keep it about the same distance away. That's my dog. Fitz Pickle, what you doing? He wants in. Alright, about halfway there. And these are vertical, so just make sure that you get these railings vertical. There's going to be two more before it hits the tree here. So I didn't bring that tree out far enough. I'm seeing. There's going to be one here. And one in between. Hi, puppy. There it goes. one on either side here. It's like fine, nobody's doing anything fun in here. I want to go back out. What's he scratching at? What are you doing, puppy? What are you doing? Go 
go back by the door. All right, fine, I'll just lay here. Nobody's doing anything fun. Cutie pie. Nobody's playing, nobody's doing anything fun. It's like Eeyore. <laughs> <laughs> Why bother? <laughs> okay, these, uh, somehow I got those proportions off really weird on here, so I'm just gonna, I don't know. I think my bridge is longer than it needs to be because these are separated out a little farther than it needs to be, I think. But, oh well. This is, this is the best I can do doing it on the fly. <laughs> Somebody would like to know what could they use instead of yellow oxide? Yellow oxide? Um, you could just add some brownish to your yellow. It's fine. You can... Some, it's just a brownish yellow, so... All right. Um, about that far away... Right in here somewhere. And then another one right here. Somewhere in there like that. I don't know. No, I want to make sure though that my tops of them are about the same height. So, which they're not right now. So I'm going to look at this and try to do my top of my railing about the same distance away. Somewhere like that. Okay, now I can bring these up where they need to be. They got a little bit of a thick something on the tops. And there are as there is a second rail that you can see. So it separates right in here somewhere, but I don't know, should we do it? I'm trying to decide if I want to do it or not. I probably should though, it looks, it looks better. But I think I'm gonna do the first part first and then do that later. I definitely didn't separate these out right. Sorry guys. Oh well, I guess I could, I guess I could fix it. I'm trying to think. I can't really fix it. <clears throat> and there's these little squares. Mine's more a rectangle. This is where I can tell I did them too, too far apart there because these ones are going to be different sized right here. Definitely mm. not photorealistic today, guys. Sorry. But not bad for freehand. Well, I could have done better, but... Well, I yeah. I mean, I wasn't going to mention it, but, you know. I should have used a ruler and measured it out. That's really how you should do it, but I didn't. My freehanding is not on point today. Okay, so then come in from the corners in just a little bit and down from the top. So it kind of creates this little star shape, which really should be more of a rectangle <laughs> square. Actually, probably could have just come up higher. I think that's the main problem is I should have made this higher because then these would have been more like squares instead of these squat rectangles but too late now so it is what it is right 
I know, Fitzy. That's how I feel, too. He's like, I could have done better, Mom. What are you doing? <laughs> We're working. We're working. I got stuff to do, though. I want you to go outside with me and play. There's no puppy friends coming today. Oh, I know. He got... He had so much fun yesterday my friend, when my friend brought her dog over. And he was so f excited I could not hold him. He was so wiggly. He just would not hold still when they came in the door. He got to play with dogs twice this week because he mm -hmm. got to, went to the doggy daycare on Monday too when I had my teeth done. Mm -hmm. He's had a busy week with lots of dog friends doing dog stuff. All right. Not my favorite. It's it's good. It's good enough, but it's I, I think I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't map it out a little bit better. So we're going to have to refund everybody the money? Well, I just, I don't know. I, All right, I'm, I'm making the decision. We're going to full refund full for today's refund. video. Okay, yep. well, well, it's not going to go very far. Pitsies. <laughs> Ugh. Dad. All right, so if you want to, you can do a second set of of the railing. I don't think I'm going to. This one's already a disaster as far as I'm concerned, so I'm not going to make it any worse by adding a second. It's fine. I'm joking, but yeah. I'm not really happy with it. It's okay. All right, so there we go. We can have a glass of that wine I can't pronounce. Yeah, I need it. All right, let's put in our swan here. Um, we can, if you want to, you can add these little railings in the water too. I need to add a little bit of the glaze to it. So kind of come down. I kind of got that one sort of in the right spot, almost. Kind of helps things. where that one's going. I'm going to use the two round, two aught round. And this one's actually got quite a bit of this yellow in it. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the Indian yellow hue and white. And do I trust myself to actually just paint it in? Should we go for it? We'll just go for it. Why not, right? Yeah. What could what just could go it. wrong? So kind of a curved neck here in body, flat-ish to the water and then rounded. Then I'm gonna do the same thing in the water here. And I'm going to use a little bit of the Indian yellow or the, the burnt sienna with this to darken up my shadow in the water. Right here where the neck comes down into the water and then grab my white. And do the back of its head. Mm -hmm. 
And it's pretty close to the same values as the background. So you don't have to like, you know, if you're looking at it from a distance from, you know, my perspective that the, you know, the little screen that I'm looking at on the, you know, all I'm seeing is like this little white smudge right in here for it. So we can keep it fairly, you know, simplified in our water here. Just leave like a little bit of the a little bit of the um, dark water right there. Like a little bit of that blue from that tree. Might get a little bit of the blue and just kind of use it to mark out between where that he's sitting in the water. Just give it like a line for the water. And use a little bit of the There we go. And then a little bit of the head, and that's, I'm not going to do a whole lot more. And With the crowd goes wild. <sighs> a little bit of black. So it kind of curves back like that. And then our little beak. Let's get some of the quinacridone burnt orange in the yellow, Make kind of an orangey. Orangey gold. It's honestly really small here. bit of black right here. I'm going to try to do a little diagonal right there. The top of the face. And I'm going to use that gray with, I'm just going to make it gray with my white here to use on the neck a little bit. Get a little bit of that yellow, but I'm just going to use it right up underneath the head. Down that neck, the front of the body into the water, and then a little bit on the feathers. Do the same thing on the feathers in the water. Reflection just a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to get the bright white. If I can get some. Try to hit the back of the head with that. And the top of the beak just slightly. I mean, these are just like literally dots. So it's pretty, they're tiny. It's kind of a cheek. And then the top tail feathers coming out. I'm going to use pretty bright. Oh, come on. I got too much water coming out of my brush. I'm trying to get some of this white that's in the middle here. It's thicker. All right. I'm going to use some of that thick white. sticking out there and just the highlights on the top of the body and a little bit in the water but the water's not as not as bright really 
really needs to come down a little bit more at an angle there. I'm going to see if I can get some of this blue and put it in the water behind it. Just shape it out a little bit. Yeah, probably if you do this, what I would do is put a little bit of color right here. I kind of set it on a, a light patch, which really needs to be a little bit darker. So I might just put a little bit of that darker blue in the water behind your swan so that it's a little bit more visible because I feel like he's a little see-through. You know, he's kind of blending in a little bit more than I would like. So you could, here, I'm going to do this really quick for the top of him. And get some of this blue. There we go. This is just the blue from our trees. I'm going to put kind of a faded part across my water there. There's these shadows come down from these trees this way in the water didn't do kind of under that bridge right here so this what kind of crosses past with, with the swan makes him stand out a little bit more so just do a little bit of that got a little bit of gray here just my water color that blue Just a little bit right there. Look, helps it look a little glassier too. Get a little bit of that blue, a little bit of black. Some glaze. I want to use the same colors that I used up here though, so I'm going to add a little bit of the burnt orange that's up there to it too. Now this is where I'm saying like if my color wasn't, um, if my color was too transparent, what could happen is I could do this and then it would scrub off some of the paint that I've already got underneath. You know, when I go to do a layer like this where I'm scrubbing a little bit. On it so that's where you have to be careful with your water you know application in your paints for the most part it's not going to be a problem though and unless you're putting your paints on super thick I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about cracking either and honestly it, acrylics are very flexible so I mean there's not a whole lot you can do to make them flake you know like that they're pretty flexible so I don't really again I I maybe in sunlight if you if you had it on a on a solid surface that was not um, that was not flex or like that was uh, it wasn't absorbing well into then it might chip off you know I have had that happen on a, like a mailbox but it didn't have it to do with how much water was in my paint. It was just because of the surface. It wasn't able to bond to the surface of the mailbox. So really flaking or chipping would have to do with just how it was bonding to the surface. It was 
put on, you know. All right, so now that that dark is underneath my swan, let me try again and add a little bit more of that white on top of him. There we go. Now we can see him against that dark background. I don't really have to do much to his face. I think we're good there, so. All right, not too bad. Um, I'm gonna fix this. It's got some stippling here that took, came off for some reason, so. I'm gonna stipple back on there. And if you wanted to do another tree right in here, maybe let's go ahead and add some leaves with a, like a little bit more of a orangey reddish tone so i'm going to get maybe some magenta and some of the quinacridone burnt orange here and add a little white i'm getting black in my brush for some reason i guess it just had black in there okay a little bit of white Let's go ahead and use this unbleached titanium since we haven't used it yet. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and use the very tip of it and run it. Uh, let's go ahead and get some brown in here too just to make it so that it shows up. What would you say? You like it? Okay. Just a little yeah. something extra. And then let's get some brighter white. And do some highlights. hide that weird stuff going on in that tree there that we're trying to do that sunspot that didn't really work out And then let's go ahead and put a few branches in there just for it to have something to be sticking to, right? Let's go ahead and put a little bit of this color over here too. Why not? Give it a little pink over here. Makes a little feel a little bit more spring-like. this little there we go kind of a chocolate cherry color there that little bit of black in there with that to make it fit with the rest of it Yeah, I like that. 
Why not? Putting some bright color in the very tops of some of them. Okay. Anything that I missed? Yeah, I like that pink. That did a, that yeah, did a lot I for like it. Yeah, I like it a lot. I like it, it kind of tied mm. in the rest of it, too. It definitely made it kind of springy, for sure. Right. Yeah, it feels more spring-like. Um, you could put a little bit of this color back in the background, too, if you need to, you know, um, add a little of it just to kind of tie it into the rest of it. We kind of used some of it up here, so I don't think it, it needs too much of it. But if you, you know, if you don't have a lot of it in your background, you might add it up just so that it kind of all blends. It's not like a new color just stuck in there with, you know, no other reference to it anywhere else. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to stop there. I, I definitely could have done better on the bridge, so sorry about that. But um, hopefully the rest of it made up for it. <laughs> <laughs> I would just, uh, yeah, use a ruler and measure it out a little bit better. <laughs> or use a traceable, either one. Um, I think that it probably could have come up a little bit higher is the problem here. And I'm probably, I squished these two together a little bit more. I could have spaced them out a little bit better so that these were, I don't know. Anyhow, you get it. You can see the problems. It's obvious what we need to work on right here, right? <laughs> We're moving on. It's like the, the I'm, I'm, I'm silent. Under Armour. <laughs> you put it on. <laughs> okay, it's obvious what parts we're working on here. <laughs> oh, you're too funny. <laughs> and I know you're saying that because I just bought myself an Under Armour shirt. Right. <laughs> so I'm getting the hints, I understand. <laughs> Actually gonna while you do that, I'm gonna add a little bit of the zinc white to the background here and just fade out the bridge a little bit. Alrighty, so we had uh, three super chats today. Wow. Uh, the first one was from Susie, and she says, "Loving this so much. Happy Easter to you and Mark. As always, thank you so much for sharing your talent and time with us." Thank you, Susie. So thank you. I very hope that much. was before, after the bridge. I don't know. Oh. That was before the bridge. Uh -oh. Sorry, so Susie. Let, let's see if they want their money back. Hold I on. Know. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Then for Maggie, she says, "Thank you, guys. Get some chocolate." Yes, thank you, Maggie. So that was right after us talking about Patreon helping nice, support our chocolate nice. habit. So thank nice. you. And then from Andy says, "Happy Easter. Have oh. a wonderful time with your family. Thank you for the great tutorials." Oh, thank you, Andy. Yeah, so thank you to Andy, Andy, Susie, Maggie, and Susie. Very good. So sweet. Definitely helps with the candy addiction. Okay, so they say it's still worth it. So still worth it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> good to know. Good to know. It. Yeah, that's a small. That's a small issue. Honestly, I mean it. Not small for me because you know I can't take it back now, but. That's something that you can work on and do do right. I'm just rushing here today and didn't take my time on it like I should have. Too late now, but she's good, yeah. well, she's I'm adding that. some water, some highlights to my water too here, just with white. I just remind everybody again about the patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. When this video was taped, it's the 3rd of April. So you sign up now, you get the whole month. And you can check out the different levels, $2 traceables, $5 traceables, plus a bonus video, $10, all of that, plus an additional challenge video that Angela does through the month. Thursdays. On Thursdays, mm -hmm. and it's a much more in-depth. So, yeah. But 
I know we have a lot of people who are beginner painters also that are at that level to join in and learn a lot more. Plus, you get your own Facebook group where you can ask questions and do things like that. So check it out. Okay. Thanks, guys, so much for hanging out with us today. And then I was going to mention thankfulart.com. Right. They can sign up for the newsletter. Yeah, I would say if, you, if you're not um, signed up... Um, for the newsletter, you can also ring the bell um, there when you subscribe to the channel. There's a little bell icon. If you click on that, it it will send you um, information when we when we do uh, our live streams. It'll send you an email. But if you want to just get an email from us directly once a week, we send out a newsletter blast that just tells you what we're working on. Sometimes you get extra perks and different things in there. So if you're interested in that, that's it. My, you can sign up on my website. I am making sure that I've got a kind of wasn't connected there. So just making sure that's connected, covering up that bridge where it goes down into those the bushes there. Okay. I think that's good. Close enough, right? <laughs> we're, uh, we're, I like it. I mean, I, I still like it. I, I definitely would have done the bridge differently, but I, I like the rest of it. So. It's it's ninety percent good. So all right. Thanks guys for hanging out with us today. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you uh want to come back, we're gonna be back on Tuesday. We're if we want to come back and see what see more of this, I promise I'll do better. We're gonna do the lighthouse next uh on Tuesday. So Ooh. we're gonna be um that'll be part of our beginner series. We've started this this year, we started a new beginner series and just kind of going through step by step showing you different techniques so this one we're going to be doing some ocean splatter and spraying i think it'll be a lot of fun definitely easier than it looks in the picture so i think we're going to simplify it quite a bit and make it very beginner friendly all right thanks for hanging out with us today guys have a great easter um and we'll see you next time thanks for watching